So we are back with more viral graphic design effects. Now, I don't go on TikTok very often. When I do, I, of course, type in the keywords graphic design tutorials because I want to just stay up to date. So let's just go ahead and look at some of these really cool effects and just like learn some stuff together. And if, if of course, if you guys knew some of these, congratulations, you've won. But sometimes it's not about learning new things. Maybe it's just like learning new techniques, new approaches, things like that. Let's just, you know, let's just hop into it. Do not forget to check out the Everything Pack. If you guys do not know what it is, all 28 of my custom made products that you get on that one purchase plus all future products free. Okay, so the first video we have here is an ASCII art design tip by Ricardo. What a great name, by the way. Uh, so let's, let's just press play. So ASCII art, I did not know what ASCII art was before this video, to be honest. I knew what it looked like, but not necessarily what it was called. So it looks like it's ASCII art is like those text characters that make pictures, which is kind of dope. You kind of probably see them like spamming like a Twitch chat or something like that every now and again. Um, so you're gonna take an image, place into Illustrator, uses threshold or more or less image trace, and then uses silhouette. And then more or less, so you don't, you don't probably don't have to do this only in Illustrator. You can probably do it in Photoshop too, for the record, but Illustrator probably a little bit easier. Then he grabs the image, what is this? ASCII generator online. So I did end up finding an ASCII generator, but it wasn't online. I actually downloaded a program and it kind of just, it looked a little sketchy at first to be honest, but it's good. It's just, it's like, it, well, it's good enough. No, if it, it breaks your computer, it's not my fault. Okay, so let's start in by dragging in our photo into Illustrator. Of course, I got a GR Super. I don't know if it's gonna actually trace well, but we'll see. So this person took the actual image, selected it, went into image trace. And for the record, if you don't have your image trace table, it's under window and then it's image trace, just like so. And then for the preset, he did silhouette. And then we're gonna take the noise, throw this all the way down to probably negative one or one or whatever. And then I'll put the path up and be like the threshold a little bit further down till I kind of get to see the car a little bit more. I think that's pretty good too. Maybe like a little bit more over here. Okay, and now for the generator part. Now for the record, I did end up using this thing right here. It's called AC Generator 2. It, I don't know, I don't know. I don't really use SourceForge as a site, but just this is what I ended up using. If anyone has any problems with it, let me know. I'll, I'll remove it from the video, trust me. We'll drag in our little car PNG, just like so. I'm gonna kind of make this a little bit bigger, actually. Let's make it as big as, oh, okay, there it is. The threshold for it is basically down here. I can drag it in the middle for us for a second, though. And I'll just take this and kind of just move it around, and you can kind of start seeing it's, it's generating numbers as a threshold, which is cool. You can see I'm just typing in a bunch of different characters right and then you can get something kind of cool so you save it and it looks like in black and white or in color which i don't have color you can do color oh also there's more there's also more settings there's like brightness and contrast oh that's pretty cool you click save you click on black and white you can click text or image and i'm pretty sure if you click text this is probably how those like twitch spams happen which is not great i'm not an advocate and don't do that please but image i press okay my output settings i can put it up to like as big as possible uh, for the best effect, this should be readable. Boom, okay, I press okay. That's pretty cool, but I, how do you get rid of, what I have to like just go around the entire thing to get rid of like the white so I can actually use it in my art? Okay, so PNG just for the record in this program at least did not work. However, there's a drop down here that I did not notice at first. If you click down, you can kind of see, you can get little dots on the edges rather than like having a, like a like whatever other number or whatever but if i click down one more time it has a clear background which is pretty cool right and i can kind of mess with this as well and then all of a sudden there's like another one with one two three fours and whatever it doesn't have also any of the background elements then there's like this one has background elements then there's this one has like a little bit more smaller characters and then there's this last one which is almost just kind of like more or less picture based which is pretty cool as well so this is a pretty cool program i have never in my life known of ASCII, so I'm I'm happy for this. I'm this is dope. Let's just go on to the next one though. Okay, so the next effect we have is by Tim Hosko. I think it's how you say it. It's a cool voice for the record. And this is basically how to create a text fade effect in in uh, Photoshop. So for the record, I'm gonna do a tutorial like this, but I think his method is way 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 easier. And I wanted to show it. So let's just go ahead and press play and get the watching. Okay. So the fade effect is again. It looks really cool. Um. Okay. So we got an image or a text. Excuse me. Makes it into a smart object, duplicates it three times. One of them, he adds a Gaussian blur at about 10 or so radius, okay. The second one do the same, but increase the radius. I can do that. Then a little path blur for the last one. I never used path blur my entire life, so this is gonna be fun, hopefully. Um, rear sync flash, edit blur shapes, okay. Speed, I'm guessing is how you lower the, the taper, he said. Okay, okay, sure. Um, then he adds a gradient map. He takes it, duplicates it a few times to start the effect, and then, okay. This looks pretty dang simple to me, 
Now, can I remember how to do this? Or I'm, I'm gonna be my phone. All right. I think I got this. I think I got this. We'll see. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with our white background, black text. That's what he definitely had. And I think the gradient is going to matter a lot. Let's convert it to a smart object. We'll duplicate it one, two times. First one, we're going to add a Gaussian blur. Okay, so filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And he did it about 10 or so pixels. Okay, for the second one, we have another Gaussian blur. So I'm going to drag it over. But this time, he put it at about 15. Okay, and then the third one, we use a filter blur gallery. And I think it's called path blur. We take this edge, drag it over here. Then he said to take the middle, bring it in. Then he said he got, went to basic and then chose rear sync flash, edit blur shapes, and then he increased the speed all the way up. Okay, now what he wants to do is he want to take it. Oh God, how do you do this? You take the arrow and you just turn it. Is this how you do it? Okay, I'm not gonna lie. One wrong move and now my Photoshop is just tweaking. I, I, this is a scary, scary, what is going on here? Why Why is this doing this? Okay, so what he ended up doing is I'm, I was moving the top red arrow. So the only thing you probably should move is the, the bottom red arrow. And that is how you get it. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in our gradient map above everything. So gradient map, his background turns black. So that means his right node over here is actually gonna be black. And then his left node is gonna be the color itself. So what color did he actually end up having? He had like he had like a bluish purple tone. So the, the the far right node here was like a bluish undertone. Okay. And then the far left node will just use like a nice little purplish kind of tone over here. Then we'll add in another one, which is just a little bit more of like a nicer color for it. Let's just do like a darker purple almost. Then we'll do one more color, and then I'll do like a like a bluish tone, but maybe I might have the blue tone be in the middle over here. And then he took the bottom one and then just started duplicating a few times to get the effect. Okay, so I do like this, but I think my gradient might be wrong still, but I'm gonna take, move them all over a little bit, and the far left one's also gonna be black. That way we can see the inside of this like text a little bit. So something like this instead, which also just looks kind of crazy, Jesus Christ. Let me play around for a little bit and see if I can cook up what it should be. Okay, so after a few little tweaks, I ended up going with this as a gradient map, and it did end up looking just a tiny bit better. So I'm gonna double click on it, open up for you guys so i have a nice little black over here which is not, not actually pure black it's like a nice little hex tone that has a little bit of undertone purple then you have the next one i'll kind of open all these so you guys can get the hex code and pause as you guys can wish and also pay mind to where these midpoints are right these little mid anchors because it's also going to solve a little bit of a problem as well so here's the light purple one we have this one over here and then we have another same exact color on the left hand side but on the right hand side as well and i think this is kind of how we have it and now if we take this duplicate this we do get a lot better of a spread in my opinion that looks a little more ghosty and like more probably direct to what the effect actually should feel like and this is it i mean yeah i mean tim right your name is tim i think a really solid tutorial but i do think you missed you just you gotta show the gradient and like you also have to probably have to tell people that you it needs to be like opposites of the lightness and darkness for it to actually make sense so if you're like a new person watching the tutorial this would be miserable but fortunately tim i got your back and I got it here. So uh, for the people who don't know, who did not know, excuse me, here you go. For at least for now, Tim will give you a W. So appreciate this one. Okay, so the next effect is by Anti Design. It's another text effect by Photoshop, which looks pretty like simple, but I also think the way they went about it was pretty cool. It's also not even in my language, but fortunately they say like layer style and like smart object and I get those words. So let's go ahead and press play and see what's up. First things first, we take the actual image. They're in actually, they're in Illustrator though. I don't know why they were in Illustrator. Okay, so basically start with a text, make it a smart object. We do a color overlay at gray. We do a bevel and an end boss. They have an inner harsh, oh God, oh Jesus. Okay, contour and they press okay. They duplicate it with control J obviously. The layer below it, they select on it. Then you do a filter, blur, motion blur and that's how they get the little streaks which is pretty cool they duplicated a few times and mess around with the actual distance they do oh my god they duplicated a lot of time mess around with the distance then they use a gradient map they're doing some neck what there's some more levels there's like more gradient maps why i'm not i don't know if we're gonna do the whole the whole thing at the end because i didn't really know what the heck was going on but i think i understand what they were going for but i think for the most part it's pretty simple let's just try to at least get close to this we're gonna start off with double clicking into it using a color overlay which i definitely saw then i saw it being on a little bit of a gray tone here okay so the bevel and emboss we have it on inner bevel so we have it on inner let me have it on sh uh chiseled hard and then we have the depth at 32 or 35 or so i'm gonna put it on 35 i hate odd numbers i hate not five intervals okay so 35 and then we'll put it on 25 for the size then the soften is on one 
then for the angle it's on 90 and then we have on 30 on shading which is good we have the screen all the way at 100 we have multiply all the way at 100 as well and the contours seem to have like a large like sort of curve at the top so to bring this up then this curve comes all the way down and then this comes down further we'll go from here a little little bevel and end boss tweak though we're gonna do a little bit more on the depth what if i use like a nice uh cove i think it's called cove we'll use ring double i think ring double does look the best so i'll use ring double i want to make sure all of these look pretty decent we're gonna have two little swoops i think it's pretty good and actually i end up using the round preset the rounded steps i think it looks really good for my font i would say either try rounded steps try ring double or cove deep depending on your font they took this oh i didn't realize i didn't make it a smart object hold on boom now i'll make a duplicate of it and then they used a the bottom duplicate and they took this filter put it on motion blur they gave it an angle of about like 60 or so and they just made this really 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 long then they did it again so duplicate it again Control j take the motion blur again make it a lot longer and then they end up using a gradient which is again I think let's just try to get as close as possible. Even the black and white looks pretty sick. I'm not gonna lie. Realistically, that's, oh my God, that was kind of like it, which mine does not look anywhere close to that. Let me, let me tweak this again. But here, let's just say this is my gradient. So I have a color, which is basically kind of acting as a white, but it's basically a little bit more of like a, like an undertone of whatever color you end up choosing. So I, I do use the purple. I don't really like the purple, realistically. Oh my, look at this blue and like pink combo is kind of sexy okay now if i don't do it i'll put the gradient map below and also i might as well put the other gradient map below as well remind me if i don't do it please someone say that but hopefully i actually have the gradient map below in this video but i'll just have these two extracted for you guys to use and all that good stuff but this looks pretty good to me i'll press okay and then I end up take i feel like what they ended up doing is taking the whole thing making a duplicate and then grouping it together is that what happened okay no they actually just took all of this and then grouped it together then control j and then brought it above it just so I'm like, why? Wait, what? So if we are here, this is the first ever layer I did. I I'm just gonna group these bottom ones. And then like, it felt like they just put this above this for some reason, but then it kind of gets rid of the whole effect, which doesn't really make sense. So I'm gonna say, we'll opt out here. But if I do at least have these two different things separate, what I feel like I would do is I would take this, drag this below. Then I might take another, uh, how do you say, uh, what is it? Motion blur, right? Motion blur this out but make it super, super tight like this. Then I'm gonna press Control U on my keyboard for hue and saturation, and then I'll take the lightness, lower this down to get like a shadow almost. And then like, I'll take a new layer above everything. We'll do like a, we'll do like a nice, we'll take a color, like a blue color from here. Let's do like lines. Let's get like really, really tight lines like this. So like, I'm gonna highlight this, almost like trace it. So the N right here, we'll trace the A over here. Right, and then what I'll end up doing is I'll take filter, blur, Gaussian blur. This is a little bit of a freestyle, but I think it might work. So I'll do like a, let's say three or four pixels. Then I'll go into here and use linear dodge add. And that, oh shit, it did, okay, hold on. I might have to lower this. So I did the control U. I brought the a lightness up and the saturation up as well. And that kind of helps, but I definitely have to go over it one more time with like an eraser, just make it a little bit less vibrant in all the areas. That way it kind of feels a little more natural and whatnot. I don't know. I think we're going to call this done for what it is. I don't know if the lights even worked. Even just like using a regular splash light might be your favorite. Also, just taking this, it might be a little bit hard to extract this. Even if you use like a color filter mode, like idea. Like if you combine all these are control, alt, shift, and E, right? Combine them all the layers into one thing. And if I use like select color range and I chose the black, let's say for instance, and I gave the fuzziness like a little bit higher, like an 80 or so, I press this. And then I layer mask this out and then invert it. Like, how do you extract this confidently? Like if it's on black, sure. But if it's on like a white, you know what I mean? It doesn't really look great. So it's definitely one of those effects that you have to kind of design around afterwards. And you can't really extract the, the type, the text effect, but still nonetheless, pretty freaking cool. I, will, I won't lie. Okay, so for our last effect, we have OGZ with a linear halftone in Photoshop and Illustrator. Now, if we were to press play, first things first, he's showing us a little bit of a gradient thing going on here, which is pretty simple with like the threshold, right? So you have an image, a really cool image. We're in Illustrator, we're using the line tool. We duplicate it, which I know how to do. And then when you use, it increases the weight of the strokes, brings it back into Photoshop with a nice little copy and paste uses a little bit of threshold to get the effect started. He also adds a Gaussian blur on the lines himself to make them more like distortion, like distorted and distressed feeling. Blurs, gradient map. I mean, this is, this is a, there's a lot of steps here for sure in a way, but it's actually not hard whatsoever, which is pretty cool. That's pretty simple. I don't, I don't, I don't think I, I don't even have to look at it again. I think it's pretty easy. Um, okay, Z, let's try this out. Okay, so this is a Photoshop and Illustrator thing. So I have to go back into Illustrator. 
So he uses the line tool here, right? Just like so. He takes the line, just kind of make a nice straight line, gonna hold shift with it. Boom, just like so. I have my weight at about five or six. I'm gonna put it on six. I like two is definitely not enough. I'm gonna hold alt, hold shift, and just make a nice duplicate, a good enough like distance in between. And then once you make one duplicate, you can just press control, uh, control D and just like hold it down to take even more duplicates of the same exact movement that you just did, which is pretty simple for us if I just hold this down. Boom. Okay, then I'll highlight all of this. Okay, then we'll just kind of just take it and then control C and control V. That does work. Okay, control C, control V. We'll do a nice little smart object into it. Press OK. Make the lines pretty big. He did turn his canvas a little bit and we'll kind of like make it bigger just like so. Boom, okay, simple so far. Then he went ahead and used a nice little threshold. So a little adjustment layer, threshold, move the sh threshold about just a little bit for now. Click on the actual lines, do filter, blur, Gaussian blur. The more the, oh, the more the cooler in my opinion. Okay, I'm gonna leave it on 3.9, but that does get rid of the, all the other lines up here though. Okay, let's say like, like 2.1. Pretty good in my opinion, okay? So cool, we have the lines, we have the threshold that's put in a little gradient map as well. He did like a nice little simple like reddish orange tone on one side and then a nice little yellow on the other side. So I kind of do the same exact thing, like an orangey yellow, which I felt like this. So the first thing he tries, he double clicks on this smart object layer, right? And it opens it back up into Illustrator. And he went in, highlighted it all, used effect, warp, and then a wave. And he just started distorting this a little bit, which mine is not really distorting that much though. I mean, I can obviously tell it's doing something, right? It's doing something. If I move it around, if I press OK and zoom in for a second, is there anything happening? Not exactly. There's like a little distortion happening, but it's not too crazy. He did end up doing things like twirl and stuff like that. So I'm gonna do filter, distort, twirl, and we can twirl ours pretty aggressively. We'll just do it at like 200, why not? And then the twirl looks pretty cool, right? The twirl with the gradient, uh, the gradient blur looks pretty nice. If I made the gradient blur even more, we can make it even look pretty cool, in my opinion. Okay, I think five is pretty dope. I mean, yeah, this looks pretty cool. I mean, besides a twirl, I can probably use like, let's say, I don't know, waves. This looks pretty good. I'm I'm pretty sure, I don't know why my uh, my my wave effect inside of Illustrator wasn't working, but this wave effect works, and I'm guessing the more effects we actually put into this, probably the cooler it can definitely look. I mean, even just with the wave, like that alone, that effect alone, you can't get that any, like any other way, right? I mean, you add a little bit of typography to it and you got yourself like a really cool idea and like a nice basis for a cool poster. And to me, that's a W. So technically, this might be the best, is this the best one? I think it's the best one because one, we kind of discovered something and then two, I mean, it just kind of looks cool. So I don't know, we'll take it from here and just say, yo, that is the end of the video here today. So hopefully you guys learned something, learned a new approach to something, or at least wanted to try something from this video. Of course, shout out all the TikTok and Instagram reels, all that good stuff for some really good content. I mean, there's there's definitely some moments where like fast paced content is just not the right place for design sometimes, but nonetheless, I got it. Hopefully now you guys get it and now you guys can just enjoy it. So with that, Sesso HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking productive guys that are much love, peace. And also if I didn't tell you yet, in the next like 35 to 40 days, this setup, okay, should be my own design studio because I am moving back to LA very soon. So New York life is finally coming to an end. I love New York, but like I love LA more. I don't know, but I finally have a three bedroom apartment so I can actually make my own little design nook it's gonna be kind of cool so i'm excited for it but uh yeah i thought i should just tell you guys i'll see you guys soon later